What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Cinematic Symbolisms. Let's hear it. Oh. There he is. What's up, Bo? So, Cinematic Symbolisms, if you didn't catch the first episode, we debuted with Under the Silver Lake, which was totally appropriate for this show. Somehow, someway, we did Midsommar, which... Happens to be the second most appropriate movie to do on the show. So, <laughs> to Midsommar, it was kind of uncomfortable to rewatch this movie. I would probably compare this movie to The Mist as far as an uncomfortable second watch. Um, oh, if you really? haven't seen the ending of that movie, that ending was pretty disturbing to me. But yeah, man, crazy movie, trippy movie, right up our alley. There's a lot of shit to break down. We got the caveman over here. We got proper field to burn. Oh, and chef. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? What up, man? Chilling. Let's fucking go. Oh, yeah. What's up, gravy? Midsommar is so fucked. That movie stayed in my head week after I watched it. Bro, Me too, so though. who fucking chose this movie? Because I sure didn't, even though I had this shit loaded already. <laughs> <laughs> I, did. I think it was like a collective, like... Let's watch I posted it, and then, and then I posted or, it, and then everyone was all scared about it. And then Zach over here, who happened to sit through a marathon of Saw, thinks this movie's disgusting. <laughs> I was like, "Come on, dude! You hey. sat through a fucking marathon at the movie hey. theaters." That was. A <laughs> I think what's time. scary about it is how realistic it seems, bro. You know, yes. I, that's actually what I want to say. These are the kind of scary movies that actually creep me out because this is some shit that could actually be out there. I'm not really scared about like fucking. You know, oh look at this monster like like it. I think it's fucking fun to watch, but it's no this is a scary movie because like this is there are cults out there like this and it's just no one's talking about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think the weird part is the fact that like you kind of felt the peer pressure of the cult, mm. you know what I mean? And almost that like the walls were closing in and there was no escape but to conform mm-hmm. so you don't seem crazy, you know what I mean? Which right. could uh, it was pretty controversial how the movie ended. Was she smiling because she accepted the role as the May Queen, or was she just smiling because it's like fuck? I what think do she's, I do? You know what I mean? I think she's smiling because throughout the movie you could see like she start she was looking for somewhere to belong, and yep. being in there, Shots she she smiled and just you know what this is this is where I belong. You know she she felt finally somewhere that fits for her. So I guess after even seeing all that shit. You know, like when they put that guy's body in the bear, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. even then she's just like, this is my life, you know, Be- because before coming in here, she felt like already an out, like an outsider didn't in her own community. Like she felt out and then now in here to be accepted. I felt like maybe that's why she was smiling because she's like, you know, I'm accepted here. This is my place. I agree because in the beginning too, I noticed like her interactions with her boyfriend. Like she was just trying so hard, and he kept oh like, like kind of like she blowing her off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then her I parents, really both her parents, died from the carbon monoxide poisoning that her sister had done. I, I believe that. it was her sister. Yeah. So that's why I feel like you know she's smiling because it's an it's it's finally an escape from all that trauma it's like because there's a lot of it's very grief stricken this movie there's a lot of grief in the themes of this movie so and i think that's very much just circled around danny that's right the, the main girl i just think of danny yeah. every time i say that shout out, uh, <laughs> abra out of boy so yeah shout out gravy gravy said i don't know which scene was crazier the suicide cliff jump or the bear suit the bear suit up with the craziest scene from that movie you say the bear suit I think the bear suit. No, if we're to pick between those two, I think the bear suit is definitely crazier than a suicide cliff jump. Mm-hmm. Can just I heard uh, the bear suit ritual review? was actually what is that pretty. Again? Was it was pretty close to like the actual skinwalker ritual that the natives would do, where they would actually mm-hmm. wear wolf skin and then mm-hmm. somehow like it would form into them being able to shape shift into 
a uh, uh, wolf or uh, whatever animal skin that they put on. Like fucking um, Night Wolf in Mortal Kombat <laughs> type shit. You know what I'm saying? Fucking Night Wolf. Yeah. So um, for me, bro, I'd have to say the most disturbing scene was it was the Phantom Orgy, bro. That shit was fucking oh. weird, dude. <laughs> yeah, that definitely was weird. Started pushing his hips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, and it's. I think also it's not one particular scene. I think, like I said, <clears throat> the most uncomfortable part of the movie was just the fact that the cult was so head over heels. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and the the belief of the community that they were living in. So, yeah, and like Which, the the numerology too, like the nine all over the movie. Uh, you know, and it mm. happens every ninety years. And it's a nine day celebration things like that Mm -hmm. and yeah so it's just and i think like you just kind of touching back on what you guys are saying like why was it so because they they it when they get there it seems so wholesome and the way the movie was filmed so bright and sunny you think it's like a wholesome place a you know a community with a lot of tradition and then as you watch the movie you see how dark that tradition really gets (laughs) yeah it's interesting that you say that because apparently in sweden they have the same phenomenon as alaska where the sun is just up pretty much majority mm-hmm. of the day right mm-hmm. and as funny as it is i heard this breakdown that you know in horror movies it's usually a nighttime where it gets scary but this kind of flipped that because mm-hmm. there is no nighttime you know what i mean so it almost played on played with the factor of almost jet lag where you know when you're supposed to be sleeping and you're somewhere where it's sunny it kind of <laughs> fucked with your circadian rhythm and kind of, kind of fuck up with your psyche you know what I mean? And it didn't help that they were also on mushrooms. So imagine being on mushrooms, being jet lag, and then, you know what I mean? There is no nighttime. Like, you're fucking tripping, you know what I'm saying? And I think it was alluded in the movie when they were tripping and out. Who's the dude who was vaping? He was like, it's it's no, it's no 9 o'clock and the sun's still out? He was like tripping out. And he also said 9 o'clock. So a little play on to the 9 uh-huh. Yeah, and I think the nine is also a, a play on to like Nazis, man, because there's a lot of neo Nazi references in this in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, pretty interesting. One thing that was pretty disturbing too that I thought was one of the most beautiful parts of this movie was Florence Pugh's execution of that scene when her parents died and she was telling her boyfriend Christian just how she broke down. Dude, cinematic, bro. Cinematic. <laughs> that was pretty intense. Okay, crush, yeah. She crushed it in this movie. Definitely. So before we break this down, just to also tease another movie we're probably going to break down that this movie reminded me of was Get Out. Okay. So yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen out. this movie before, but if you've seen it before and you watch it again to break this down, you're looking at one character a little differently the second time around. I don't know if you guys are watching Pele differently this second yeah. time around. Pele's the uh, this was my first time watching this movie. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's good that you brought that up because I'll I, try to rewatch I, it. I can mm-hmm. see the connection that it reminds you of um Get Out. For me, it was the Wicker Man. I don't know if you guys ever seen the Wicker Man with right, fucking Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I didn't and, see the Nicolas Cage when I saw the Christopher Lee. Uh what's his name? Yeah, and like that was Wicker like from Man, the seventies. Like from the seventies, yeah. Um and they kind of had the same thing where they're sacrificing the outsiders. I don't know if you guys primarily the man, right? Yeah, yeah the... The <laughs> Christopher Lee, yeah, Count Duke. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and it, he was, it was also a a um, summer solstice um, ritual yes. ceremony. Yes, so there you go. Yeah, that's some arachnid behavior. If I can eat our heads after you take our seat. Funny enough, the director was approached by the studio, and they said to make a Wickerman esque story. So that was the ask uh, for the production company. Interesting. And, uh, okay. Ari Asher was like, "Dude, bet you know what I mean." <laughs> and so it's one of those you. things where, like, you've been wanting to do it so so long that when you got the green light to do it, it's like. I don't need to dive into the inspiration too much because I've been waiting to do this project already. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I've been after waiting you got that green light, <laughs> after you got that <laughs> green light to do Wickerman, he's like, bet, you know, he just got going with it. It's funny that so. actually that, that was like the conversation. Cause I remember watching, it was like, this reminds me of a Wicker man. And <laughs> oh, so. yeah, 
you need it. Also, like somebody give me a bear stat. Dude, like, if you were a production company, this is a dream project because there wasn't much special effects. You know what I mean? There wasn't much CGI. <laughs> I think the budget was $9 million, so... Damn. It's been yeah, a pretty doable. And another movie that was low budget that I want to get into later on is Coherence. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. There's a lot of gems. I haven't heard of that or seen it, but Ooh. there's a lot of gems for low budget films. I mean, yeah. just to kind of get a little off, you know, Godzilla... Uh, the one on Netflix, the, the, the Japanese, what was it called? Uh, Godzilla. The minus one? You're minus one? one right? That's a yeah, good yeah. fucking movie for a low budget. Actually, you know, watch that too. tonight, dog. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good Godzilla. fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just getting back on topic now. I know we were talking about low budget, but yeah, so for a low budget film, this is, it didn't seem all that low budget, but it just shows you mm-hmm. the creativity that people, you know, money can definitely get a lot done, but if you're creative enough, yeah. Bro, the, the scene after those two people fell off the fucking cliff, they had they're like dragging them on the on the table or whatever, bro, to put them over to fire to get cremated. Mm. They face them faces was fucked up. Like that shit looked like legitimately like yeah. love with you know, Did you guys see like there's so many like different hidden faces, which was kind of creepy in the movie? I don't know. Um, there was like mm. the crying faces when they were putting that that little crown on her i guess you want to call it the flower and if you kind of look closely in the flowers there's like these crying faces um yeah there's like in hidden the, faces in the throughout trees the too in the trees yeah, trees, it was yeah. Like, in the trees you apparently that, that was her sister time. yeah i saw wow. that yeah apparently that was yeah. her sister because remember her sister and the gas oh, mask. Oh, yeah so crazy, it's supposed yeah, to elude it was supposed to elude the fact that she still that's that shit still haunts her so at least that's what I got from that. Still in the background. It's still feeling that yeah. she has yeah. goosebumps, low key, man. Damn. I did not notice that. They're so going to have to do round two. Let's break this down. So let's start off at home and then let's go to Sweden. Okay. And we'll break it on Sweden. So at home, interestingly enough, Ari Aster, the director, also directed Hereditary, which is a movie yes. that we should break down. It's a crazy ass movie. You catch me? (laughs) So anyways, what's interesting about this movie, it's about a cult, right? And the cult is predominantly Caucasian people. Pagans. And (laughs) I guess most of the film was filmed in Utah. And I think the movie takes place in Utah, which is interesting Mm. because there is a Caucasian cult slash religion over there. KKK. Right. (laughs) but it's interesting because i think um there's a lot of swedens or swedish people in in utah i think there's a later day saints right they're later day swede town over there swede town i think the second largest ancestry group in utah damn i didn't know about that pretty crazy and before even the movie that that little um, painting that they had, right? Pretty much depicted everything. So there's a lot of symbolism yeah. with the color, uh, mm-hmm. blue and yellow, but Midsummer, it's obviously about summer. So mm-hmm. in the beginning of the movie, they show a painting of wintertime. And in the wintertime column, they show the parents, you know, doing what they did with the sister. And then in the middle of it was supposed to be spring, which was the cycle of life. So it goes winter, death, spring, birth. And it's interesting because in the spring panel, you see Pele almost spying on Christian and Danny from a tree. Yeah. yeah. It was almost like he's premeditatedly choosing these people, you know what I mean, for the cult. And then he's also leading them into the Swedish celebration thing with a with a flute so it almost lays everything out here and like i said the first time you watch this just like the first time you watch get out you don't really pay attention to the uh quote unquote the trafficker right or the kidnapper (laughs) yeah doesn't doesn't the god or the 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 ancient or deity uh pan have a flute pan's flute yeah Yeah. the flute's name is made is named after pan like a planetary right it's supposed to be right. like a K- I think no, I think uh, hereditary was Paymon. I, I mixed that up the last time. Okay. Yeah. But life and death was the was the common theme in this movie, I think. And the cycle of it. And Chef, I think you looked up what is it called? Atestupa? 
Yeah, I testify. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, so that breaks down the crazy, the first crazy thing we see when they get to the ceremony, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that again, I mentioned this earlier, but the name supposedly denotes sites where ritual genocide took place during pagan Norse prehistoric times, whereby elderly people threw themselves or were thrown off to their deaths because they could either not support themselves or they're not able to assist the household anymore. So yeah, that was, that was, and that was a wild scene, but I do think that was kind of crazy because it is uh, a Swedish term. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. So very, very crazy, very crazy. Yeah. And I actually looked into the, the theology and the belief system of this, and they willingly do this because they don't want to be a burden to their community. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it something that actually happened, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Like, people actually did this shit. But see, Yo, like, have- to us, it's crazy. But, like, when you're in a cult like that, it's normal to them. So they're just like, we're just doing what we do in our world, you know? If you have 100% faith that this life isn't the only life, you know what I mean? Then they almost just feel like they're going on to the next life or they're getting recycled and coming back as a kid again type shit so kind of like what ended in under the silver lake when they believed that they would ascend yeah. ascension so they believe <laughs> they essentially believe in samsara i yeah. mean everyone does at some point i mean look at all the history of the cults the ones that were wearing the nikes they took all that because they believed the spaceship was coming to get them as long as they died on time <laughs> oh yeah this is yeah it's, I'm hearing that. it's nuts and um what's it called Again, there's symbolism of the blue and yellow. So I guess blue and yellow, if you watch that scene where they do jump off the cliff, there's blue and yellow imagery. And if you watch this scene where her parents take their lives or the her sister took her life and took the parents with her, there's a lot of blue and yellow imagery there. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's supposed to symbolize life and death, but it's also supposed to symbolize Sweden because the yeah. blue and yellow flag. Ikea. Um, Ikea, yeah. <laughs> um. And it's funny too because did you catch that the guy's name was Christian and Christian yes. like represents Christianity? Uh-huh. I kind of thought that's what it was, right? But you know, you know the easy way to get the Christians, man, just to show them a young girl. <laughs> done and done. No, young boy. Oh, that's Catholic. Relevant. That's Catholic, bro. <laughs> yeah, the young boy is Catholic. <laughs> that shit's funny, bro. And yeah, I mean, like just Christ- Christian somehow following their lust into a cultish ceremony. I feel like is a common theme too. You know what I oh, mean? Cause that happened in the movie, right? He started like thirsting after a younger chick. Oh yeah. And like, she was like uh, manipulating him like back. Right. If I'm not mistaken. That, that wasn't yeah. that in the, that was in like the barn or whatever. When they, when they finally got, got down. Yeah. But, yeah. I think, yeah. but there was stuff leading up to that though. She was like, you know, running into him. They're yeah. like making eye oh. contact at the dinner yep, table. Yep, yep, yep. Pubic. But yeah. Um, the I, there's also a crazy theory I heard that um, her parents might have also acted in the tradition of Atestupa. That'd be crazy. Shit, I'm yeah. watching this movie right now. She's so bad. She, I let her sacrifice some nigga. <laughs> you talking about Florence Pugh or the or, <laughs> yeah, Florence or the, Pugh. Or the cult chick? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, put her put her in that uh black widow oh, suit. Rand is <laughs> down bad right <laughs> now. Fuck all these fuck all this midsummer fucking uh clothes and shit. Put her in the fucking black widow suit. Put her in a mid skirt. <laughs> also, you know what's interesting too? If you rewatch the uh part where they finally get to the place and they meet, you know, the rest of the people over there, no one is interested in meeting any of the guys. Like they're shaking hands with the guys, but their full attention is to Danny, you know. Almost alluding to that this was a recruiting process for the next Mayflower Queen. And it's funny because, again, we we talked about a lot of neo-Nazi undertones in the cult. Because in Sweden, there is a lot of neo-Nazi places over there. It's interesting because the other dude that Pele meets, he also brought some guests over too, right? The couple? Yeah. Yeah. Brother, right? But they weren't Caucasian. And they were together still. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The difference with Danny engaged. and Christian is that they were going to break up. And that there is also a theory that says Danny is Scandinavian. 
That's why they're always like, welcome home. You know what I mean? Oh, snap. Okay. Yeah. So which makes her the perfect candidate to become the next Mayflower queen. Um, Would y'all consider this a matriarchy? Um, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I, I think in a way, I think in a way, I guess it could be. It's all for the preservation of the Mayflower Queen. So, I mean, that's true. Yeah, I mean, no, it, you got a could, point. It could. The men, the men are basically disposable in this in this ideology and this kind of lifestyle. I, I, I mean, disagree, though, because the main controllers were the uh, the priests. You know what I mean? Yeah, but their their objective though was to preserve the 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 Mayflower Queen. I feel like they knew the Mayflower Queen was just the means to reproduce. You know what I mean? Yeah, because so they, they, they do the that whole time. They, dance, the whole time right? they alluded to the respect of masculine and feminine energy, right? That alluded to nature, right? So yeah, and mm. they were doing that mating dance thing. Was it a maypole or whatever? Mm. You know, talking about. So there was a lot of like fertility stuff going on in here. Like they're they're really trying to. So yeah, I mean, I, I see both sides of what you guys are saying there. Maybe some eugenics. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely eugenics playing a part in that because you're birthing more women that are appropriating that kind of ideology and lifestyle. That's all. It yeah. Is. Well, also, it's hard to say because they do treat their deformed kid as an oracle, right? So true, true, true. if that oracle is dictating what goes on and which Mayflower Queen gets, you know what I mean, gets chosen, whether she mates on a certain day. Then it would mean that they're all kind of cogs under his control. You feel me? Or its control, whatever the fuck that thing is. It's an it, right? Because it's it's a force <laughs> that's manipulating them to do that, and they're all just conforming to it. I think Bailey was fucking manipulating Danny, to be honest with you. Yeah, 100%. man. Oh, yeah. 100%. So that that's another thing. They brought her in her birthday, and dude, like just a death that traumatic you don't think everybody would know you know what i'm saying of course like, right like they would for sure be like hey make sure you tell your girl you know what i mean is your girl gonna be okay mm-hmm. unless the christian dude was just that much of a jackass that he's just kind of keeping it on the low till the fucking week before you know what i mean but yeah i think uh i think pele is is a little more manipulative than than he is when mm-hmm. you first watch the movie, you know what I mean? Or even the second time you watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of like sly, and then you kind of like pick up. I was like, this guy's kind of manipulating, you know? Yeah, he, he does come off as controlling. And in the second panel of the first painting that I, I pulled up, he's playing the flute, which is like the Pied Piper, you know? Yep. Yeah. Link yeah. his friends there. Mm-hmm. For some reason, though, that, that movie really did make me feel like I was high off something, man. It did a good job cap- capturing that that feeling of like what's going on over here. Did a and good job just, of mushroom capturing the feeling. Yeah. You know, do the faces in the background, the, the switch up of paces from mm-hmm. chill using mm-hmm. pleasant, crazy, disturbing. Definitely all the, and all just the how, colors. and the sunny, like it's like euphoric, bright ass way, color, you know, bro. Mm-hmm. it's yeah, weird. Man. Cause it has that, those bright colors mixed with that kind of grotesque overtone. You know what I mean? It had that good balance of like being colorful and bright, but also yeah. like the darkness of what was going on. Like it was a pretty unique balance that made it, I think, pretty palpable. So I did look to see if there were festivals that practice the same thing. And it looks like in Uppsala, Sweden, in the 10th century, there used to be a grand golden temple. And in that Grand Golden Temple or around that Grand Golden Temple, they used to have heathen festivals that took place every nine years. And there's this guy named, I think his name is Adam Brennan. Let me look him up, make sure. He reported sacrificial practices held at the temple. Adam described the nine males of every living creature are offered up for sacrifice. And tradition dictates that... Their blood placates the gods. The corpses of the nine males are hung within the grove beside the temple. Adam says that the grove is considered extremely sacred to the heathens, so much so that each singular tree is considered to be divine. What? 
The shit. What the what's what's up with, with this divine tree popping up every fucking where, dude? It, it's Norse mythology, right? Don't the yeah, Norse believe in Yggdrasil, the tree of Yggdrasil. Yeah. So, Jermaine, do you have anything on the Norse mythology and paganism stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, pretty much there's there's a lot of references to it. Um, let's see. I kind of have it written down. There's a shit ton of runes. Well, well, the runes are definitely part of like Norse. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And there was a uh, love holiday. rune, right? She, she placed like yeah. a love rune underneath. So, the, the things I have is like because, you know, a lot of stuff that goes back to like Norse paganism is their reverence for like nature, their their view of life and death. Um, that's all Norse paganism. And obviously, like Jerezi said, the use of the runes. And there's a lot of focus on the sun worship and fertility, you know, like what we just spoke about. And, you know, it directly ties to a lot of ancient Scandinavian traditions where Midsummer was apparently an important holiday to celebrate light and life. So that's that's where I kind of got the North paganism um, drawbacks there. Is it here? The the summer solstice is the shortest day, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be the shortest one. It's yeah, it's the opposite over here. Man, I think also too in the beginning they depicted the sun with a almost menacing smile, almost to show that the sun isn't the good guy in this movie, even though it's a horror movie, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, the Norse mythology of if if you look at first of all the runes, there's this uh, theory called the Uthark, and I think in the beginning of the movie, Josh, the token black guy of the group, he's got a book <laughs> called yeah. "The Secret Nazi Language of the Uthark," and if you look that up, it's actually like a study on these runes and how these runes have been, or how these runes have evolved into becoming modern language. Yo, that black guy fucking fell asleep uh, on on the timestamp one thirty two. Fell asleep with his shoes on. <laughs> it's like that. It reminds me of that video. Mexican got boots. Mexican got boots on. <laughs> I don't know why they got boots. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were. I don't know. I watched this breakdown on like them actually being racist and the fact that they were kind of pissed that like a colored person w- knew so much about their cult you know what i mean because mm-hmm. he was the person who actually wanted to do research on them and then christian just kind of stole his research which is a very christian thing to do. yeah right <laughs> i do remember that yeah you did steal that facts yeah man um, but going back on like some norse mythology stuff before we move on you know um so what i had written down is like there's a the number nine is very uh, prominent in the movie. And that tree that O'Ree's kept talking about is like, you know, why is this always on? It's because it's like a sacred tree. And in Norse mythology, like they have a tree like that. And remember when um, Odin hung himself? Get the for, room. Like, yeah, he hung himself for like nine days and nights to gain wisdom from what I remember. So that tree kind of like represents that. So um yeah so maybe ari oster was like oh and like we were talking about testu but that's that's a very norse thing like a ritual ritualistic suicide um which they they pretty much did back in the norse mythology so i i feel like there's a lot of inspiration <laughs> just just by going off of that but um i don't know if you guys saw anything else that there were any draw callbacks for you guys to reference anything shit the fact that most of them were fucking blonde yeah there's that too you know what I mean? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. the indicator that they're scandinavian right and then i mean it's right the, right the, they the way they crept up on that on old black dude when he was inside that building looking at the book bro like they really did not like outsiders bro like they was not feeling that shit yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, he was kind of sneaking through i mean that's <laughs> you know what i mean you're kind of you kind of dug your own grave in that yeah, one yeah they busted his shit what the fuck in? i don't even know what they hit him over the head with but at least I'll teach you that. so as much as we want to break down the crazy stuff and flip this movie around flip this movie upside down and try to turn it inside down and try to get a bunch of symbolisms out of it i think the main theme of the movie was trauma right obviously yeah I think a lot of people grief and talk trauma. about. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if oh. you guys have seen Inside Out. 
the fact yeah. that all this could have been avoided if she had enough emotional intelligence to just grieve when she needed to to have mm-hmm. emotional intelligence to just break up with this dude if she needed to you know true I mean? true and i also think this is a reflection of modern people where you yeah. know what i mean we go through crazy shit we lose people in our lives that are really important and then next week you're in the rave rolling and all mushrooms <laughs> you know what i'm saying like, right right like there are a lot of people out there that are preying on vulnerable people. You know what I mean? And sometimes you kind of fall into the traps and you're not knowing that the traps are there specifically mm-hmm. made for people like you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, another theme and like, like you said, there's a lot of trauma and grief. Um, I feel like sacrifice and rebirth is a common theme in there too. It's always sacrificing and in, in turn, rebirth is something else and like you said we get the the new queen the mayflower queen after all that sacrifice and after you know this thing happens once every what 90 years like they said and so mm-hmm. um the sacrifice and rebirth thing was a common thing for me i saw that you know sacrificing the outsiders so they because they believe in the rebirth of this and um also like cult versus community was a lot in there there was a lot of that in the movie um but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of themes in this movie that if, it's it's not like one watch. So if you're tuning in and you're trying to see if you're going to get all this in one watch, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, I should. I definitely should have watched this twice because now that I'm kind of going through like the paintings and, and browsing over that, I'm like, damn, dude, there was a lot of like hidden hidden yeah. things in the paintings. And you I noticed the paintings right out of the get go. Yeah. I just didn't know what they meant. But I noticed that every time the painting would come up, yeah, 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 exactly. I just didn't know exactly what. And well, also her family's death was foreshadowed in the artwork if you kind of like paid attention to it. And then in the tapestries, there was also visual clues of like how the, you know, the plot was going in the movie. They had the orgies in the background. They yeah. had Mayflower dance in the background. They had the, the pubes in the background. <laughs> the pubes so and the, the pubes and the menstrual. Oh, the pubes, yo, low key. I think that shit surprise, surprisingly might be real, bro. Like I hear, like magic spells are Supposedly, actually, yeah. yeah, like that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, making people ingest your fucking hair or your fucking yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, like you know, take a bro. sip with a finger drop or. Uh, a drop yeah period so this one had the pubic hair and menstrual blood <laughs> yeah make sure you guys oh, yeah. don't try this at home man i was gonna say <laughs> motherfuckers, no, already, no, 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 motherfuckers no. already ate the taco raw bro it's too late <laughs> they already ate the taco raw dripping blood bro it's too late uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> one thing i did also <laughs> interpret the first time i saw this movie when they were almost collectively feeling what someone else was feeling is the fact that these people are in a cult and because they're in a cult, they haven't really been exposed to much other than what they're shown. You know what I mean? So when one of them goes through something, it's almost like a new emotion. So in order to feel it, they almost feel it all together. You know what I'm saying? Like a, as like a whole, like as a collective yeah, because I think I saw this breakdown where when they have a kid, like the whole village takes care of the kid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it even goes down to, well, first of all, when the two elders sacrifice himself, they all cried together too, yep. right? Yep, yeah. yep. And then go into the sex part when they all were orgasming together and having Yes. Sex. Quite interesting. Sex yeah, it's, it's almost like, a, it's weird. As as much as people talk down on cults, I think they do have their hands on a lot of concrete spiritual philosophies and practices, right? And it just <laughs> say what you want about weird. cults, but, <laughs> but it was a very it was a very <laughs> great depiction of them being a vessel and emotions being this thing that just passes through people. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. In a weird visual matter i mean it was yeah. so, there is a lack of individuality amongst their group well, which is why they were all wearing yeah. white too yeah, you yeah. Know? You almost shed their uh their identity yeah to be in the cult and i did notice too man like they put an emphasis on like just the women enjoying themselves um, way more than the guys the guys are kind of just like tools to be used as seen fit you know what i mean yeah um they seem more 
like soldiers and guards like they had a function opposed to just like members in the society because even the people that were kind of not guards or, or elders like the peles you know what i mean like they still went out and recruited people so they still had a function yeah. they weren't mm -hmm. just like parts of the society you know what i mean which is probably why it worked you know yep everyone had their purpose yeah everyone had their role so pretty crazy stuff process your traumas or, or else you'll end up in a fucking festival with some cult members fucking yeah and flowers. that's because you're lost and it, I, i'm willing to argue some of these simps would enjoy that lifestyle honestly but that's why she was smiling at the end because yeah, like, that, oh, that's what? why she was recruited you know what i mean yeah they, yeah, they saw her fit. yeah they saw her fit for it she had the right yep. variables in order to see it you know what i mean and they almost prepped her with the mushroom tea like yeah. the whole thing was a psychedelic ceremony. Oh yeah, because that, ne that, neuro, that neuroplasticity, <laughs> it, you know, when you're on, when you're highly susceptible to that neuroplasticity that uh, you know that you that you undertake when you're under that shit, bro. Like, <laughs> it really makes you appropriate certain behaviors and certain ideas that you would never think were okay. It's not yeah. It almost to me reminds me of like kind of like some satanic ritual abuse type shit where. Of course, in a, in a in a really in a weird way because like she was already traumatized at the very beginning of the movie, yep. And so all this got put on her while she was still grieving and and processing her trauma, mm -hmm. and so she was probably more susceptible to go along with it as opposed to fight it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was extremely know. vulnerable because her tribe that she was with wasn't giving her the love and the care that she thought she needed. Yep. And dog, as soon as and she you, gets to this think, place, she gets. You think one of his homies had her back? You know what I mean. None of the, them, dog. The only yeah. one that had her back was trying to pay like, recruit her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. But okay, so do you guys think that Christian's fate was justified, or do you think Danny was like way too far gone already by the end? I think Christian was a double whammy for them because they wanted yeah. an outsider to procreate with their yeah. person, and at the same time. She, he was gonna bring in Danny for them, no strings attached, because he was trying to get rid of her again. Yeah, you know? yeah. But in D Danny, what they did pretty well in the movie was, you know, the the character development because going from em her emotional arc and then from trauma, grief, and then empowerment to catharsis, you know, you're kind of just seeing that all playing throughout the movie, and then it kind of makes you wonder: Do you think maybe her transformation at the end was a positive or negative one? Because Coming from that dark hole she was already in, do you think, you know, this is just like some critical thing I was doing? I was like, is this really a negative outcome for her? <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it, yeah, it kind of goes back to the, like when they entered the village, how like when they filmed it, it was upside down, right? So, yeah, I feel like mm. a lot of this, when we like analyze it and like we look back at it, like it just depends on our like perspective, I guess, at the time, because you can definitely of course. see that in two different ways, you know, because it was like what of she course. saw was horrible all of her friends are dead but now she has like a new like place to be so like she finds the positivity and it's crazy how like the the different ways you can think about it apply to a bunch of different parts she found a positive and a negative and you know that's that's kind of like my takeaway like a necessary evil as well the exactly. actions that she committed it's interesting you say that bro because yeah the whole time like the people were like welcome home danny and they knew yeah. it was her birthday. You know, her boyfriend forgot it was her birthday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like they almost were the uh, the solution to her problem. You know what I mean? Like I said, she felt like she belonged. That's why at mm -hmm. the end she smiled. She's like, these are my people yeah. now. Because none yeah, of those yeah. people that they sacrificed, like you guys said, had her back. Yeah. And it seemed like these people, like it's almost, it's almost like grooming, I guess you could say in the beginning, just saying hi, like, you know, happy birthday. Yeah. It's, it's a grooming in a sense. The, like, only, you know, the only person that she had cared about too, that had her back or thought she had that had her back just cheated on her. And mm -hmm. then when she goes to process it, boom, not alone. Everyone there's with her and they're breathing with her through it, screaming with her, showing that like, it's all right. Like we got you. And so that was like the last yeah. thing she needed to, fully but, accept what's going to happen to all of them. But do you think, okay, so just going back with Jerezy said, this is all pre-planned and premeditated. Do you think they selected that group in particular 
because they knew she was coming from a group where she's trying to fit in, but they don't really have her back and they could bring her in and manipulate that whole idea. It's like your group doesn't support you, but we do. That will take them out the picture. Taylor was there. He was yeah. right in the kitchen while they're all talking and doing all their dumb shit, like complaining yeah. about everything. He was just being quiet, observing mm-hmm. and listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you look, like I said, if you look in the painting in the beginning, he's on the tree, specifically mm-hmm. looking down yeah. at Christian and Danny. Mm-hmm. So maybe he was scouting Christian and Danny, and the other two just kind of came along with the package. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Using that, they didn't really have a function. You know what yeah. I mean? Yo, yeah. I just I just saw a part in there, like a, a timestamp 150. They're basically cannibals. Did, I did, believe did, it. Didn't they have they had somebody's body on there and it's specific somebody's like, is that a pube? <laughs> yeah, I and mean, then somebody's like, Yeah, that's a pubic hair. Literally, <laughs> I was like, okay. I, I, yeah, I, it was I only remember. in Christian's meat pie. I can't remember. I forgot that. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot that part, bro. In like the the, shepherd's pie. That yeah, body was, was the actual, I think it was the black guy, right? Yo, you you might be right. I, I might have forgotten that part, man. Yeah, because there's like they had a they had a zoom in part on the on the meat that was on the table. It should have flies all over it and shit. They're sitting here talking about pubic hairs in their food, bro. Yeah, yeah they were cannibalistic in nature too. Most cults are. Another fucking crazy ass scene in that movie was when she took the mushrooms and then she was kind of gravitating towards that circle that was singing. And then she got closer. They started laughing at her. Do you remember that? Yeah. That shit was creepy, bro. Was trip, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. She was the only one that didn't eat something, right? She drank it. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Right. They hooked oh, they, her up. They, they, like they hooked her up with her, her own bro. shit. They, they all sat there and fucking watched her, like fucking pick her utensils up, all weird and shit. She mm-hmm. did take a bite though. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they all they all couldn't eat apparently until she did. They had to follow exactly what she was doing. Yeah, that's true. Everyone's yeah. like, "Hurry up, bitch!" It is like a hive mind. It is like a hive mind because sure. everybody everybody's disregarding their individuality. And they're following mm-hmm. the the maiden. What's interesting too, not only did she lose her parents, right? She was over there under the influence of mushrooms. It was her birthday. Her boyfriend forgot, and they were going to set her boyfriend up with someone else. You know what I mean? So they had every they had like a trauma bomb to to get her to <laughs> pretty much That's sign good. the contract. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be the Mayflower Queen. So. It was all carefully laid out, that's for sure. And definitely, again, as you guys have already stated, premeditated for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a crazy scene when Mark was killed, but they don't show it, right? And then later on, you kind of find out his fate because one of the villagers was wearing his face as a mask, remember, in the final ritual? Yeah. Oh, that was so crazy, bro. Yeah. 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 That shit is so crazy. Even well, for me. Ancestry tree, man. Jeez. Oh, you had to go pee. Yeah. Let's wrap it up with that. I probably don't want to watch this movie again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not for Agreed. now. Uh, it's kinda... I thought it was a good movie. Um, and then, like, as I started doing more research on the current world events and the st- state of affairs that we're in, yeah, it's not so digestible now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> See it. It's a fucking foreshadowing. It is. It is. Yeah. Life imitates art. I mean, because you have extreme men. You, there's extreme women, too, bro. Extreme gender. With movies like this, though, it's one of those things where, like, I wish I didn't see it, but at the same time, like... You're glad you did? Yeah, That's all you know right I mean. now. Because it, it's giving right. you kind of a, a like a, like a look in, into the souls of some people that are, you know, on this planet. Like, some people really do think like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'd say it's an accurate depiction if you don't want to stick your head in, into the real scene. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. This is a good emulation of what they're like out there. Yes. So. Us. Crazy, crazy. Well, mid Samar, this was number two of Cinematic Symbolisms. We're going to go down the line. Who picked this one? Zach picked this one, right? I did. I like, defaulted to me being like, well, yeah, let's do this. I, right. I picked it, but it was Zach's turn, so we just went with it. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll have, uh, we'll have someone else pick the next one. Yeah, um, pick the next one. It's October, so could be horror could we're not watch be horror. Hereditary, aren't we? i said what's it called i said inside out that would be a cool no. not trippy ass movie <laughs> no. to break down you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's in a village 
The Village is a good one. And like I said, all the Stanley Kubricks, we haven't broken them down. That would be dope. Ooh. Hey, also, Scanner Darkly is a good one. We should watch that. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, th- I, would oh. Argue, I would argue one of the best movies for us to review would probably be Hellraiser. Yeah, it's a good one, too. Well, it's funny because, like I said, we did Midsommar right after Under the Silver Lake, and it would seem like a movie that I would pick, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But we're going to have a lot of variety here. They're not all going to be trippy. They're going to be some yeah. of them are going to be funny. Some of them are be inspiring. You know what I mean? Cold symbolism in Rush Hour 3. <laughs> Coach Carter. <laughs> you did. <The> whale. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the Titans? <laughs> Watch The Whale, boys. The Whale's yeah. a great movie. Forrest Gump breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, let's sign off at the cave on all platforms. Cave.com, K4V3.com. We got proper. We got field of burn. We got, oh, we got chef. We got it all. See you guys later. Peace. Later. Peace. Don't, Pasta sacrifice. Pasta. Don't sacrifice your man. <laughs> Do you need him? <laughs> or trauma? Need you. Then do the shrooms. There you go. There you go. <laughs>